Uh, for the last year or so, we've been uh, presenting these presentations probably for probably, probably since like last summer. And basically what we came up and realized is that uh, the public didn't know what was going on. And this is what's so great about events like this is because a lot of people were saying nothing's going on up there, nobody's doing nothing, but there's a lot of great things that we're gonna be talking about here. And when I first took over city manager, one of the first things I did is I, I uh, interviewed or I spoke with the staff internally and I asked, okay, what's working, what's not working? And I was just, I was just amazed to hear so many people. And first of all, we have an awesome staff. Uh, you know, everybody from the street department, our police department, fire department, they work really hard. So I want to give them respect and let them know how much I appreciate them. But what we often find, specifically Beaver County, let alone in Beaver Falls particularly, is we don't like change. You can smile. <laughs> we do not like change. And that was one of the first things, uh, you know, some of the things that weren't working, we were asking the question, well, why are we still doing this if it's not working? I don't know, that's the way we've always done it. So with the support of the mayor and our council members who are so forward thinking, we started implementing change and we're continually to implement change. So that was internally, but I found even more out in the public, it was even worse that there was people do, that did not want change. They would, you know, people would say, oh, we wish we had a council, we wish we had a mayor, we wish we had an administration that would be forward thinking, that had vision. And then when we start implementing things, guess what we hear? Why are you doing that? Why are you changing that? We liked it the way it was. We are committed to not just implementing any type of change just for the sake of change, but we're prepared to implement change for the better. So this slide, of course, of, uh, some of you may have gone through the presentation. This is uh, a, uh, a, 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 our vision for the future. And this uh, drawing was uh, crafted by the SPC, which is the Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission for Transportation. And we work with them in PennDOT, and I'm gonna be talking in a few seconds here about the greater um, vision for the PennDOT project itself. But what had happened is our community development director, is Bethany here? I know I've seen her somewhere, there she goes. Bethany's doing a fantastic job for us, and uh, I've been, been a pleasure working with her on casting this vision and working with council. And so basically, we are prepared to create a walkable downtown. These are all the things that we've been working on for years. Um, and what had happened is uh, when I, my first year in, um, as a city manager, I was invited to PennDOT to uh, talk to them about an upcoming road project. So basically what's gonna happen is our downtown road is going to be converted from a four lane highway to a traditional one lane south and one lane north. Uh, one of the things is, PennDOT, first of all, that's their road, but they've been super fantastic with working with us and helping us, you know, uh, I guess put it this way, a couple years ago, it was a complete disaster when they did the work up on College Hill. I don't know if anybody remembered up by Sheets. That was a disaster. We lost like one or two businesses out of that, and I was blessed to be my first year on as city manager, so <laughs> you're welcome. But, I, but I, uh, I, I'm super encouraged by the work that they're doing. I talk to their project manager at least once a week. So basically, they said that the, uh, because we have one of the widest downtowns and it's unsafe and they felt that it's not pedestrian friendly, they wanted to convert it to, once again, a more traditional downtown. So as you can see, the bike lanes are gonna be uh, added also. And the unique thing about the bike lanes, which uh, Dr. Trop will be talking with you in a few weeks, I believe they got some good news today on one of their projects. Uh, we have a really great working relationship with Geneva College, probably the best it's ever been, and, um, and uh, we'll, we'll, you know, I'll talk about that in a minute as well. But the bike lanes are going to be a part of a, a $1 million grant that we received downtown. And uh, those of you who live in Beaver Falls and that you live in Beaver County, there's not too many communities get a million dollar grant for their downtown. So that was really exciting for us to receive the one million dollar grant. Part of that one million dollar grant is going to be a lot of other nice things that we're gonna pick up. But uh, the key thing that I wanna point to is besides the outside dining, which is one of our visions, we issued one of our first permits for uh, outside uh, seating capacity, <coughs> excuse me, up at uh, Beaver Brew. They received that uh, about a year ago. So we're, we're gonna be, and as soon as this project's done, what we wanna do is we wanna go out and encourage 
some of our other businesses to uh, look at having outside seating. So that's one of our goals. But if you look, I'm used to having my pointer, but we'll work this out. <laughs> if you look, um, you'll see a unique traffic system. It's called reverse parking. I'm going back this. So uh, we just launched this a uh, couple, about a month or so ago. And basically, as part of that, uh, with the bike lanes, it was very important for us to take a look at what is the safest way to put bike lanes in. It's not backing up, a car backing up into traffic. Uh, I'm like many of you, whenever they first propose this to me about reverse parking, I'm like, I'm a, I've been a policeman for a long time. I'm like, what is that? Right? But we've done our research. One of the first places to do this was a place called Pottstown, PA, and it's on the eastern side of the state near Philadelphia. I called their city manager, and uh, I asked him, I said, hey, what's the deal? How's that working for you? And he says, for the first six months to a year, you're going to have pure havoc because it's new. <laughs> he says, if you can weather the storm, you're going to be okay. And I said, how's it working out for you? He says, great. So I, I like to share this story because at the time when I called them and I started researching this, I wasn't that long retired as a police officer, so I always know the real deal is to call police officers. They talk my language and I talk theirs. So what I did is I called their traffic safety guy out there and I asked him, I said, hey, give me the real deal about this reverse parking. And he told me they love it, it's reduced accidents, and it's become a lot safer for pedestrians as well. Another place that's done it is Waterford, PA. That's just uh, right outside Erie, PA. Uh, they've implemented this. Uh, I did some research on that as well because there was some, um, there was some, there was some uh, email, or not email, but uh, probably like some blog reports or some documentation said that they re received like 30% in reduction of business. Talked to one of their councilmen up there. He totally disputed that. Just last May, they uh, voted to keep them in place. They love it. Uh, there's portions of Erie, I believe, that has it. But I count this once again as one of the victories for us because PennDOT said, in a Pittsburgh region, we choose you, Beaver Falls, to take a look at and see if this could work. Now, once again, we worked with the mayor and council. This is not necessarily written in stone. We're going to evaluate this over a series of years. So it's not going to be just like, oh, yeah, once it's done, we're not going to ever review it. We're going to continually review this and take a look at it to see if it works. Um, I'd like to share also, I did this uh, similar presentation with our neighborhood watch group the other day, specifically for the road project, but I'd like to share this because I'd like to show you the mindset of our council and our mayor. Uh, when I was first tasked with presenting this to our council and mayor on, hey, we might get a million dollars and we could get reverse parking, and I put a 20 minute presentation together and, and, and it was time for me to go before council. The first minute or so, they were like, Okay, no problem, go for it. So I had like 18 minutes to kill, so I didn't know what to say. <laughs> but, but I share that to say that our council and mayor are very in tune with change. Um, I, I can't say enough that I, I respect our mayor and our council because of the fact that um, I, I talk to other managers, even me as the chief of police, I've been blessed because I hear other municipalities talk about how their councilmen call them and drive them crazy every day, and they're like, you know what I mean? I'm like, no, I really don't. <laughs> so. I'm not just saying because my boss, my guys are sitting here, but that's the truth. That's the truth, though, for real. They, they've done a fantastic job in uh, the vision. So, yeah, so once again, with this reverse parking, I know it sounds scary, but actually studies have shown, if you look up actual studies, it is a lot safer to do reverse parking. Also, reverse parking is a lot easier than parallel parking. I don't know how many times you've been behind people when someone's trying to parallel park, but... As you'll see, um, this will work out. I think I have a slide that will be coming up next. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so as you can see, the, the bike lanes are going to be, the, of course, the top is going to be the existing, what it looks like now. The next frame down is what the, what's going to look like here in the near future. Uh, once again, some people have asked questions. We got this on Monday. They said, well, what do I do if someone's trying to back into it and i got to wait on them? As you can see, there's, there's a bike lane, and I always share with people, we don't anticipate having like a bike marathon running through town every night. So, you know, there's going to be limited, if any, initially, bikes that are going to be going up and down the street. So you have that access as far as the road. Uh, you have almost 11 feet of travel lane, and then we're taking out the no left turn lanes, and we're going to be implementing left turn lanes 
uh, left turn signs we're eliminating, we're going to be putting in left turn lanes. So that is a lot of space. We're still maintaining our space. The other thing I'd like to mention too about reverse angle parking is PennDOT proposed to us, they said it's unsafe and it's, uh, and actually one of the uh, gentlemen, he was an engineer, he, uh, he came to the office, he went and got donuts at Orms, it always ends up, we talk about Orms and the relationship, but he said he was absolutely terrified to back up to come and see me, and I said, I get it, brother, you just got to learn how Beaver Falls does it. We look down the street, count cars, wait till the light turns red, and we just jam it and just back up, <laughs> right? I, I don't know if I've been successful with it so far as a... <laughs> I mean, even as a police officer, I would very rarely would park over there as I was like, you can't, I mean, if you look at, how many times have you backed up and there's a van or a truck? You can't see nothing, right? But, Doug, can you go back one frame, a bit, uh, the other one? So this concept gives you the ability, to, when you're in your car, to now look and see, and even creep up. Once again, I showed you where that bike lane, you're able to now, inch yourself up and now you've got a clear vision of traffic coming down the road versus once again that truck or that van or that car that's right here and then you're inching out and you're just praying that you're going to get out. So, so once again um, this, is, this is the proposed what we're going to be looking at uh, in the near future. So a part of that we also the, out of the million dollars we got for the uh, for the downtown with the bike lanes and uh, what happened is those are bump out curbs. This, is, I believe, is a picture of New Brighton. They have already have them implemented. This is becoming a going trend in PennDOT roads as well. Now, that creates a better, uh, uh, I guess, gives opportunity for pedestrians to have a shorter distance to cross the road. So basically what it came down to during this project, because we had such a great relationship working with PennDOT, we were going to be responsible, as, uh, we as a city, were going to be responsible to pay for ADA compliant, that's uh, American Disability Act, uh, curb ramps and all that. And the first number they gave me was like 80 something thousand dollars. But they said, hey, because you're working with us, I think we can find you some money. They found us like 75,000, 70 something thousand dollars on top of the million dollars that we had. So out of like a seven million dollar project, the city's only paying $15,000 and I don't think that's a bad deal, okay? So this is the, uh, this is the projected uh, timeline. Uh, as many of you have probably been through town, a lot of that work's already begun. Uh, they've already shut off the utilities, and, um, and basically what's gonna happen, uh, we were just informed recently that our car crews, will, which will be June 8th, uh, a major film crew, or uh, a film crew's coming in to film the car crews, so we worked with PennDOT because they wanted to hit the ground a little bit sooner, but to show you how well they've been working with us, they realize how important our car cruise is. So they're gonna wait till after the car cruise is completed, they're gonna start June 10th when they start ripping up the road and tearing the road. Um, Renee is one of our business owners here as well. I see some of, uh, some of the other business owners here. Her sister is one of our newest ones, welcome. Um, the, we're just going to have, uh, I, I encourage if you're a business or if you have any questions, please contact me because we're going to have a, uh, a liaison that's going to be able to talk to them about the concerns of like, when's my road going to shut down or where, it, you know, uh, when are you going to start the sidewalks or uh, the bump out curbs portion actually. But anyway, once again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a call and I will, if I don't have the answer, I'll make sure I try to get it for you.